Hello! Welcome to episode 19 of my Photoshop Lightroom and Photography Tips. My name is Serge Ramelli and I am a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris. Last week we started our time-lapse photography adventure and we did a time-lapse completely and utterly just using Lightroom and nothing else than Lightroom. This week we're still going to use Lightroom but with a plugin and that plugin will give us the ability to do a lot of things. Starting with this week, pan and zooming. This plugin uh, is free. It's free up to 400 pictures of your time lapse. If you only have 400 pictures, it's free. If you, if you go above that, then you have to buy the plugin. It's not an expensive plugin, it's an incredible plugin. I invite you to buy it because it's really good, but you can still use the free version to follow along and it works no problem. So let's get started. Let me show you how we can do this. All right, guys, so this week we're going to do a new workflow on this time lapse story. So we're starting with the same photos in last week, but we are going to go into some more advanced stuff and I'm going to try to explain it as the simplest as possible. So here we have our time lapse. Uh, we have not retouched it yet, but instead of retouching it right now, we're going to do a little trick. We're going to go to internet and we're going to go to this website called lrtimelapse.com. LR stands for Lightroom, of course, timelapse.com. You can go here to the download and download for Windows or Mac this incredible uh, plugin or software, you could say, called LR Timelapse 2. Okay, once you've installed it, like any other software, um, this is how it looks. I'm going to go to the time lapse. This is how the software looks. On the, my left side, I have a browser, a folder browser, and I'm on the, on the same folder that I am here on Lightroom, you know, with my 129 photos of the Eiffel Tower. And um, this gentleman made a very simple workflow. It goes from left to right, and I'm going to explain you each step. Okay, here we have our little time lapse that we can see. We can preview it. Okay, so far it has not been retouched. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize um, the raw files. What that means is that it's basically going to create an XMP file. It's just a regular file next to the JPEG file. And that file is going to be empty. There will be no, um, there will be no retouching. It's just ready to get some instructions. But right now it's empty. Okay. So we have not retouched anything. The next step is define a reference area. The idea of defining a reference area is you have to find an area. I mean, you can skip this step, this step but you have to find an area where uh, the exposure of your photo will be the most represented. Here, for example, so you click on it. It says click and drag inside the preview panel to define an area that reflects a characteristic brightness trend of your sequence. You see, for example, if in the sky there would be a lot of clouds changing, you know, going uh, bright or going, uh, you know, dark, it will not be representative of the overall brightness of the photo. So I usually go for something like this, you know, just make a regular square where I have a bit of the city, a bit of the sky, you know, like here are the big skies, big clouds here. The, the clouds here I know are a bit less, so there will be less change, you know, and this doesn't change that much. Okay, so now I did a, so, a sort of analysis. What's important to understand is just for your information right now, what this line here just shows the exposure. You can see it goes, it's a bit, you know, going up and down. It just shows the exposure variation of the photo. But anyway, so far all we've done is initialize and define a reference area. Keyframe wizard, we're gonna jump because that's something that you can only use in the paid version. And I just wanna show you how you can use a free version to start with. And so the last thing we're gonna do, so all we did so far was to create empty XMP file. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into keyframe and create create keyframe even spaced, okay? And I'm gonna choose two. What this is gonna do is very simple, is on the first photo of my time lapse, it's gonna put a little, you know, blue square here, which is gonna create a keyframe uh, at the start and something at the end, okay? But it didn't do nothing. All it did was create a keyframe. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the XMP save meaning we're gonna save these settings, which basically for now it's like totally empty, into the XMP file. So um, 
that's it. We have not done any retouching. Now I just go over to Lightroom. I select all by pressing Command A and I right click and I go into metadata, read metadata from file. So what this is going to do, it's going to read that exmp file, sorry, that this software created. And the only thing that it really did so far from what I can tell is crop the image, but it cropped the image in a video format, meaning in a 16.9 format, 16, you know, aspect ratio. So, it, but it didn't do any retouching. But one thing that it did is that on the first photo, it created a star, it put like a one star rating. And on the last photo, uh, here you can see some retouching, but that's the old retouching that we did last week. See now it's going away because we um, it's reading from this empty XMP file. So all we did last week is gone. And you see it, it puts a star here at the end also. So this is, you know, I mean, I'm taking these files because we had them from last week. Normally I would start right away using that software. So now I'm going to choose the one star. I want a, the one star uh, files, which is this, oops, sorry, one star file. It's basically the first photo and the last photo. And see, the whole idea is to make variation between the first and the last photo in the retouching. So I'm taking the first photo and I'm going to do like last week. I'm going to retouch it really quickly. I'm going to open up the shadows. I'm going to bring down the highlights. You know, my, that's my usual formula. I'm going to press the option key, bring up the whites. I'm going to bring down the blacks, same, same way. Put some contrast. All right. Um, I'm maybe going to brighten up the whole photo a little bit and uh, put a little uh, graded filter over the uh, the photo yeah, but I'm gonna make it I'm gonna lower down the exposure just a little bit I'm gonna brighten up the saturation so we have more blue sky and close this and um, and then what I want to do is I want to do a pan and zoom so I'm gonna go on the crop tool and you see it's already cropped with a 16 uh, times 9 aspect ratio which is basically the video aspect ratio I'm gonna lock it you have to lock it to make sure that when you move this around it stays in that same thing but remember we have 5184 pixels large and and, and a full hd video is only 1980 pixels large so we have a bit of room to do some zoom and pan in it so here for example i can take this put this in uh in the corner here for example okay and um Press enter. So now I, I crop this. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. Let me go back this. I forgot to correct the horizontal line. So take this the angle tool and make it straight. Yeah. Okay. Press enter. So now, okay. I have cropped this and I've zoomed in my photo and I'm pretty satisfied with the first result. Maybe I'm going to add a bit of clarity and a bit of vibrance to the whole photo. Yeah. Even more. Okay. So that's my first retouch. Now I'm going to synchronize that retouch to the last photo. So here we go. Synchronize. Make sure that check all is checked. And I'm going to do, uh, yeah, I'm even going to synchronize everything. So now the last photo looks exactly as the first photo. But here is the trick, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm going to change the cropping of the last photo. I'm going to make this here, for example, maybe a bit up there. Okay. Change the cropping maybe a bit bigger to, so that it not only pans, but it zooms also. Something like that. Okay? And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. The only difference between the first photo and the last photo is the cropping, which is different. Okay? So now that this is done, I have both of my photos selected. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go into metadata. I'm going to say, click on save metadata to file. So what this is going to do is just for these two photos, it's going to write in this external files all the retouching we've done. Now I go back into uh, Lightroom time lapse and I click on reload. And it's going to read all the XMP files connected to this photo. But we only change two. And as you can see, look, the first one, exposure has a, diff has a value, crop has a value, crop left, crop bottom. It only shows, basically, it only shows what we changed and all the rest basically look for example here uh, contrast is at 36 and it's at zero for all the for all the other photos except 
the last one. The last one also has got, you know, all we change on the photo is not written to this. So what we want is a smooth transition between the first retouching and the last. And the only thing we changed was the pan and zoom. So I'm going to click on auto transition and it's going to calculate. Basically, it's going to calculate a smooth transition between the, the two cropping factors, the two crops that we did, creating a pan and zoom on our time lapse. OK, now it ch it's changed. You see, it did a nice transition between the first and the last. So we now have to save the XMP file so that this transition can be saved for each photo. Go back into Lightroom. OK. Uh, I, I take out the star so now we have everything selected. Press Command A to select everything. Right click. Metadata. Read metadata from file. So now it's going to read from the XMP file, the transition between the first photo and the last photo and giving us the possibility to do pan and zooms and much more. But uh, so now that we have read, uh, you know, all the, the, the metadata, let's go into slideshow and let's see what it looks like as a time lapse. So slideshow, I choose my 24 frames per second. I'm going to go for the 25 frames per second for a change to make it a bit more smooth. 25 frames per second. Um, then I'm gonna go for the, um, I'm gonna click on export. Make sure I'm gonna take this time the 180p 25 frames per second. What's important is that this 25 frames per second is the same than this 25. Then you can choose whatever size. You can choose one, uh, you know, 1080 25 frames per second or uh, 720p uh, 25 frames per second. Uh, which is uh, here, sorry, 720p. So yeah, I'm going to go for the 1080p. I'm going to go and save this as the, um, I'm going to call this time lapse FL pan zoom dot mp4. I already have tried this, so I'm going to replace the old file. And now it's going to create my time lapse, which is going to take probably five minutes. So I'm going to pause this and we come back when it's ready to be shown. Okay, so the video is done. This is what it looks like. Um, here we go. So yeah, it's doing a pan and a zoom on the entire video because we had high resolution files. I show you again, a pan and a zoom. Okay, now next week I'll show you how to um, I'll show you how to make other effects like making it going from bright uh, to dark or from very warm to cold with the same principle. You will see this plugin is really amazing of what we can do. And this is just the first touch of it with the pan and zoom. Okay, before we go back to the studio, as usual, I want to show you that if you go to photosearch.com slash apps, or you can just go on the homepage and click on the app store. Here you can find all my training, mostly on Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, it's about two hours course. It costs each $10 and I'm getting more and more great reviews on it. So thank you guys. And uh, I invite you to check them out. Also, if you want to see the past episode, you can just go on the podcast section of my website and you can see all the back episodes, including the raw files that you can purchase. It helps support this podcast and you can follow along and try this at home. Okay, and last but not least, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button so you can get this free weekly podcast free every week okay guys let's go back to the studio okay guys so i hope you like that tutorial uh it's really an amazing plugin and we will see more on that next week zixwiss inspiration is a famous famous man on the internet called tom anderson he is the creator of myspace you know he's the guy that was on the, the myspace hello my name is tom like the first friend you had when you were on myspace he sold that company years ago and now he's a full-time photographer. I met him a couple of days ago uh, doing a photo walk in Paris. He showed me his portfolio. He's an amazing photographer and I really uh, invite you to check him out. Okay guys, so I will see you next week for another episode and we're going to talk again about this plugin and time-lapse photography. Goodbye.